Recently on the channel, we've been looking at historical radio topics, CB radio in other countries, as well as the darker side of amateur radio. Along with deliberate air traffic control interference and explosive booby traps left at repeater sites, we looked at jammers planted nearby repeaters in the 1980s to cause disruption. A number of people commented on the lack of explanation from me as to why these activities took place, what motivated them and what the individuals involved actually got out of it. The truth is, I have no idea. Why does anybody disrupt a hobby? However, today we'll be telling a story I was sent by an individual who actually decided to jam a repeater with a camouflage jamming device and antenna. So, let's take a trip over the Atlantic to Mount Diablo in Concord, California. This is the home of the K6 POU 2 meter repeater in Contra Costa County. This individual decided recently that for his own reasons, he had to take the drastic step to deploy his own jammer on the repeater. As with previous videos, they're not designed to give people ideas or encourage this type of behaviour. We all know it goes on and I'm only going to tell the story. For this reason, I won't be going into the technical aspects of the device, except that it was made with a Bofeng UV5R and a cheap MP3 player. The jammer was named the Annoyatron, as it was low powered and not really designed to deny people use of the repeater. The individual had the idea that the radio amateurs that were the target of the jammer were experienced in radio direction finding and that it would be found in less than 24 hours. ET kit. Direction, radio directional finder. It looks pretty advanced. Are you familiar? Four or eight antennas. Got four and a little connector piece in the middle and then a nice big box to the left of it. Nav 2020 or nah, I can't see it, I don't have my glasses, but uh, uh, I guess it's configured with Google Earth. Oh yeah, it uses Google Earth. Oh yeah, yeah, this is nice. It's like just under 400 bucks. Looks pretty uh, worthy. Therefore, MP3 recordings that were played as transmissions were kept short and brief, interspaced with semi-random bits of silence. There was quite a lot of paranoia from the individual who went to the trouble of stripping off any serial numbers or date codes, wearing gloves, wiping the equipment down and even encasing the Bofeng and MP3 player in epoxy resin. If that wasn't enough, the whole lot was then encased in concrete inside a plastic ammo box. This effectively made it a single-use and disposable device. He loaded up the MP3 player with a 24-hour playlist composed of silences and various audio samples on an SD card. This way, he could have it play 24-7 but make it transmit on a rough schedule. When power was applied, it started the MP3 player at track 1. He programmed the Bofeng on the repeater's frequency and turned on Vox. Then he hooked up the output of the MP3 player directly into the mic jack with a cable. The whole unit was then camouflaged, hung in a tree and powered by connecting the power leads which were covered in epoxy resin. It was secured in place using a heavy duty bicycle cable and lock and it was hooked up to a homemade three element Yagi constructed from some metal rod. The Annoyatron went live on the 15th of August 2020 at around 3pm Pacific Standard Time. It ran for three days before the batteries ran out, but it did transmit on the repeater for the whole time. All the local amateurs on the repeater made comments about it, but nothing actually happened. The individual didn't plan on going to receive the equipment, but six weeks later, curiosity got the better of him, and he drove by and checked on the jammer. He looked for any trail cameras anybody may have happened to set up and found that the device was still in place. 
During this time, there were other active jammers on K6 POU. One played a siren and others played short noise type maker audio clips. So let's look at the psychology around this. He was a really paranoid person and he said in his own words that he would never typically be such an idiot and willfully jam a repeater, but he was compelled to do so for political reasons. He didn't want to get found as he didn't want this move to be associated with him as it would have had potential significant repercussions. There were a few intended uses for the Annoyatron. It was designed to create more repeater traffic, annoy all the users and very much be pointed with a political message. Almost anyone could talk over it when it was active due to its concealed location and low power output. The individual isn't well known in the amateur radio community, but felt that the atmosphere on K6POU was toxic. He said that the group were getting more toxic and aggressive after the Annoyatron was planted, which led to him basically turning the radio off and walking away from the hobby. He's told me that it's since all died down and some of the milder locals have come back. Everyone is identifying their stations often and most of the other jammers have gone quiet and conversation has for the most part returned to general rag chewing. So make of that what you will. It's intended to be an insight into the mind of a repeater jammer, which many asked for in previous videos. Now, I just need to point out that unlike the GB3MH jammer, which happened just before I was born, this one did happen last year, but I do live 5,200 miles away from the repeater. I got it. Eight, five, four. Yes, 